separately come together for the fourth challenge for the strongmen here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. Event four is next. Dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. Just two events remain for the strongmen here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational at the Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet. And Lawrence, we were talking earlier, this is a very unique combination of movements that we're going to see in this next test. Yeah, absolutely. I've been competing for nearly 20 years, and I've never seen these two put together. You often see the yoke put with other moving events, but to have a static event and a moving event together is a very unusual combination. Combination. We have some incredible yoke runners here. We have some incredible log lifters here. So this is an interesting one to pick. We are running out of time to get yourself to the top of the overall leaderboard. This is where we stand with two events remaining. Martinez Lietzis has a one point lead on Tom Stoltman. Stoltman winning the last event, the Wheel of Pain, to put himself in second place overall. Alexei Novikov sits in third. And how about Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who despite the fact that he finished near the bottom in the opening event, now finds himself in fourth place overall. Event four is brought to you by Ram Trucks, the only truck brand to win Motor Trend Truck of the Year three years in a row. You have to carry the yoke 50 feet. It weighs 1,000 pounds, and then three overhead log lifts at 360 pounds. Yeah, this is going to be a, a fantastic event. 1,000 pounds, and look at this beautiful equipment again. The Slater log there. Lovely, lovely log, and this yoke just looks epic. Well, Kiki Dixon is down on the field, and she spoke with four-time World Strongest Man Magnus Ber Magnuson about this very combination. Guys, when Magnus speaks, you listen for that advice, right? This thing is heavy. He said, first order of business is get underneath it, find that stabilization, that balance, do a couple of baby steps, and then that's when you put some speed behind it. Thank you, Kiki, and I know the yoke was one of your favorite things to do when you competed. Absolutely, one of my favorite events, uh, and we've got some incredible yoke runners today. And this event for me, it's all about Kieliszkowski. If he's in form, he's exceptionally good on both of these events, but the man that needs to perform is Novikov. This is his chance to gain points on the leading two. I think if he's going to have a shot of winning this title, he needs to win this event and hope guys like Kieliszkowski and maybe even someone like Rob Kearney. Rob is an exceptional athlete when it comes to the yoke and very, very good at log as well. So someone that could do him some favors here. Jerry Pritchett will be up first, currently in 10th place overall with seven points. His best finish was in the opening event. He took seventh in the elephant bar deadlift with 856 pounds. 1,000 pound yoke, unbelievable. No, he's not feeling it today, unfortunately. And Jerry Pritch is going to call it. Just has not seemed like he's 100% this entire weekend. Un unfortunately, not. We've seen better days from Jerry. I think he needs to go home, get himself back to full fitness. He's a great athlete when he's in top form. 2020, he had an incredible year. World's Strongest Man performed exceptionally well. The Shaw Classic, he was performing really well in that one. You can see there, he was just pointing at um, Shivlikov's back, maybe to say, just feeling something in there. But it's not been his week. He's a tough man, and you know he'll be back. Mikhail Shivlikov will be up next. If you're not able to complete the entirety of this event, the distance that you either move the yoke or the amount of reps that you get on the log will be used as the tie break. Absolutely, I, and I don't, I don't think we should take uh, Jerry's performance there as, as a sign of what's to come. I'm very convinced all the top guys are gonna sprint with this yoke, finish it no problem, and it's gonna come down to who does the logs the quickest. Very interesting element for this event. Normally, you'd wear different types of shoes for this event. You want something that you can move fast with and, and give you good ankle support on the yoke. 
most of the guys tend to wear Olympic lifting shoes on the overhead events, just like you would on, on a barbell overhead. You tend to be able to generate more power. But a, a 360, yoke, uh, 360 log, sorry, for these guys isn't a tremendous weight. They're all capable of a lot more for singles. It's all going to come to, down to how their legs are feeling. We've already had the wheel of pain. That's going to take it out of them. The yoke is, is in there as almost a distraction to, to fatigue them a little bit before they get to the log. And there is Jerry Pridgett, who just has had a tough last couple of events and a tough weekend just overall. And you saw the, the crew moving the yoke back. Rogue Fitness had to design a special cart to move that yoke. This isn't light equipment. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> the next athlete, I believe, is Mikhail Shivlikov. Shivlikov in ninth place overall. Best finish was in the last event. He took seventh in the Wheel of Pain. Was able to push that 55 feet, nine inches, eight and a half points. And we have a few different battles uh, appearing now. The mid-table, Kiliuskovsky with 17 and a half points, Brian Shaw 17 points, and Rob Kearney on 16 points, all battling to get into that fourth place. Kiliuskovsky with a win here could really put himself back in contention for the podium. And Alexei Novikov, he needs to beat Tom Stoltman and Martin Zlises if he still believes he's got a chance of winning this contest. Just one event remains after this. So if you're not in position to strike for the top of the podium after this event, it's going to be hard to get yourself into that mix with just one event left on the schedule. And on paper, you'd say Lisis and, and Stoltman are the best stone lifters. Doesn't always go that way, but I'm sure Novikov would like to be ahead of them going into that event. Mikhail Shivlikov will be the next man on that 1,000 pound yoke. Look how massive this piece of kit is. Usually he's doffing that beret. He's traded that in for a, a baseball cap, which I guess is more appropriate for the, the setting we're in. I want to see him back with the beret. You know when that's on, he means business. Oh. Getting a slap. He's trying to get fired up. It'd be good to see him show what he's capable of. Very tough individual. Exceptionally strong. We've seen some fantastic performances from Shivakov at the Arnold Classic. Very good log lifter as well. He's got to get past the yoke first. He has to move that 50 feet. And if he can do that, then he will move on to the three log lifts. There's a two and a half minute time cap for these athletes. Patiently waiting. We'll get the signal to go in a second. Trying to fire himself up now. He needs to dig deep and get some points. You've stood in these situations before where you're just waiting to get at things and what's going through your head in these final couple of, of seconds before you actually get to get out there and do your thing? You're a little agitated because you just want to get on with this. You know, the, the waiting around, that's when the nerves are kicking in. He wants to be getting set up on the equipment. He wants to feel the yoke in the right position. I always like to get angry on these type of events. It, it just helps take away the pain. You want to be focused. You want to be, you know, you, your senses want to be ready for that. As soon as that beeper goes, you want to be going on the B. <laughs> it's, you don't want to hang around. He needs to be up fast, into his stride. He wants to get really tight in his upper back. This is all about stability in the body. You need to control the implement. So his upper back needs to be nice and tight. Then he'll figure out the hand positioning. He wants to make sure the crossbar is going all the way from shoulder across to the traps onto the other shoulder. You don't want it on the top of your neck. Some guys have this a little too high on the top of your neck. It can cause a lot of pain. You want to make sure it's on that meaty part of the traps and the shoulders. And then you get yourself nice and tight, upper body firm, braced. And then it's all about speed from the hips. You don't want to run. You're not trying to take big steps through the knee. The movement comes from the hips. Then you're a little bit more stable. 
You see that white line on, along the floor there? I always tell people to look at that line and just focus on either side of that line, short, fast movements. Shivlikov is now set. He will be the second man onto the 1,000 pound yoke. Here we go, takes his position. Bars nicely positioned across the shoulders. And how is that hamstring holding up? He's going okay here. And if his hamstring's still hurting him, this is gonna be excruciatingly painful. Making steady progress. Just about halfway there. Seems to keep going. Once he gets to the lock, he'll feel a little more comfortable. Here we go, Shivlikov trying hard now. He's nearly at the end. The crowd really steps. getting behind him here, trying to get him over that finish line. Almost there, one more big effort to get this yoke finished. There we go. Just needed to break the line, now he's onto the log lift. Three reps here. And he has 90 seconds to do it, and you can see he is known for this. <laughs> I was just going Blood to say. Blood coming out the nose. You've, you've seen it before with the deadlift. You know, so much internal pressure builds up, and this is not the first time this has happened to exactly. it, can, it can look quite scary if you've never seen it before, but it's just that build-up of pressure under 1,000 pounds crushing down on this man. Blood pressure shoots up a little bit. He's okay. He's used to this. Very interesting combination of events, like I said earlier. Footwear is normally different. Feeling it. Shivakov not able to make a successful lift on the log, but a very, very impressive effort on the yoke. You can't say he didn't try there, can you? Absolutely not. <laughs> Just really gotten through that. 50-foot yoke carry and then tried to make a run at the 360-pound log. But he is your early leader in this event with eight men left to compete. Eight men to go. So far, we've had no one manage to lift the log. I think that's going to change now. J.F. Caron coming out as our next athlete. J.F. is not the fastest on the yoke, but he's solid, and he's a solid log lifter as well. I think he's capable of completing this. Don't expect him to be the fastest out of this bunch, but I think we could see a nice, solid performance, and it will give us a good idea of what to expect from the competitors still to come. Knowing that you have the log lift waiting as we take one more look at Mikhail Shivlikov's uh, effort here on the yoke that he was able to carry that entire 50 feet, but knowing you have that you have that looming after you do the yoke, did, how does that change at all the way you maybe approach this implement? Do you know what? For the top guys, they're just going to sprint. They mm -hmm. want to get the yoke done as quick as possible. The less time you are under that bar, you don't want to be, the, the time under tension is always going to fatigue you. So the quicker you can get the, the yoke done, the more energy you will have by the time it comes to the log. I don't think there should be any tactics about trying to pace yourself. Three reps on a 360 log is, is very capable for, for these gentlemen. It's gonna come down to who does it quickest, so you can't hang about. And when we get to the guys like Novikov, when we get to the guys like Kiliuszkowski, guys like Rob Kearney, they are extremely fast on these implements. Rob Kearney especially loves him, but the log, he is the former American record holder till about two weeks ago, a couple months ago, he uh, held that record. And it was just recently beaten, but Mikhail Shivlikov trying to cool down after that max effort that he just put forth. Let's go back down to Kiki Dixon on the field. Guys, I spoke with Jan Todd and a few of the athletes, and the shoe conversation was definitely had. You see, normally these athletes, these strongmen, wear a separate shoe for each of the events but they've got to adapt with this. It's for time. They're not going to take the time to swap out their shoes most likely. And what we've seen across the board mostly is a traditional athletic trainer. Yeah, that would have been my choice, uh, to be honest as well. Just because the log isn't super heavy, you know, a lot of these guys are well capable over 400 pounds. I'd be wanting to get the yoke done as quick as possible 
and then they're all strong enough to, to handle this type of weight without perfect conditions. It's not a log for Max. It's going to come down to speed. They have brought out the special cart to reset the yoke, and it looks like it is now back at the starting line. And J.F. Carone will be the next athlete out. Carone had a great start to the competition. He won the elephant bar deadlift with a lift of 926 pounds, but then he's run into some trouble. He finished ninth in event two, the sear ladder, and then 10th in the wheel of pain, looking to get back on track here. He needs a big performance here. Yeah, he certainly wasn't enjoying the wheel of pain. Just can't seem to figure that one out. An incredible deadlifter. I think he's going to be up for this. He knows he needs some good points now gets to get himself back in contention. Wants to place as high as possible in this contest. Such a cool character, JF Caron. He, never, he won't be rushed. He's very laid back. He doesn't tend to let changes in events ever affect him. He's always prepared for anything. And this being an event that is a little unusual, I don't think it will throw him off too much. Right now he is tied for seventh with Luke Stoltman at 13 points. He's only four points out of fifth place. That's where Brian Shaw sits with 17 points. Take a look at Dell Diamond here in Round Rock, Texas. Usually the, the home of the AAA affiliate of the Texas Rangers, the Round Rock Express. Rogue Fitness has done a great job of transforming this baseball field into a great place to showcase the strongest and the fittest athletes on the planet. They even built a hill. They did, yeah. It's, <laughs> there's a hill out in center field that's rather imposing. I'm sure the athletes are glad they're not carrying this yoke <laughs> up that hill. I don't think I've seen any of the strongmen actually walk up it. I don't think I've seen a lot of people walk <laughs> up it. It is deceptively steep. I don't think the, the camera does it justice. You get out there and you look at it. It's, uh, it's rather foreboding. Yeah, I went and I walked up to it the other day and then I walked away. <laughs> you made the smart choice. <laughs> <laughs> JF on there. Just final preparations. Can we see someone finishes? I think JF's going to do the, the whole distance and all three reps on the log. Kyle Shivlikov is the man who's gotten the farthest in this event. He was able to complete the yoke carry, but not able to complete a lift on the log. Jeff making use of those huge traps. He's moving pretty well here. This is more like it now. And this is an absolute sprint compared to what we just saw from Shivlikov. And Corona is done inside 20 seconds. The whole distance without dropping it now onto the log. Focus on one rep at a time. He's going to pull it up to his lap. Powerful hip drive to roll the log up to his chest. Very easy. And a solid press there. Gets a down signal. We've seen our first rep on the 360 log. J.F. Caron won event number one. He's had two bad finishes since then, but looking to get back on track as he hits rep number two. Can he finish this in under 60 seconds? Let's go, J.F. Come on. Powerful row. Big, powerful hip drive and into the press. And Caron down has signal. done it. There we go. That's how to do it. 56.03 seconds. Just demolishing both parts of this event. This is more like it. This is what I expected to see today with these athletes. And he needed that. Coming in tied for seventh with Luke Stoltman. One event win already this weekend. But then a ninth and a tenth. But that is really going to help J.F. Corona as he looks to work his way back up the overall standings. He'll be pleased with that. Good, solid performance. The yoke has never been his best event. So a good, solid run there. There's a lot of good guys to come. Our next gentleman, Luke Stoltman, one of the best log lifters on the planet. J.F. Caron came out this thing like he was shot out of a cannon, didn't put it down once. 
and was able to traverse that entire 50 feet in less than 20 seconds. It was decent. It was decent. I'm a, I have huge expectations of people on the yoke. Obviously, I've done it many times myself, and I think he can improve his technique, but the strength was there, and the log lifting was excellent. Nicely paced, good, powerful clean, and an easy press. Every single rep just looked the same. Very, uh, very efficient on the clean. Just using the triceps there to finish off the lift. Good solid performance from the Canadian. And then this is the final lift that would give him the time to beat. And he completes this whole thing in inside a minute. And sets the early mark to beat as we have Still seven men to go. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for J.F. Cologne. J.F. Cologne, looking to add to his 13 points. Again, just four points back of Brian Shaw for a spot inside the top five. Yeah, that mid-table battle now is really getting interesting. We've got a number of athletes very, very close. And they'll want to be going into that last event in a solid position. And there's JF Caron getting some new fans. It's one of the great things with this event is bringing CrossFit and Strongman together, showcasing both sports in, inc in an incredible way. And there are times in CrossFit where those athletes will train with strong implements like yokes. We've seen those in, in events and, and like logs, but not to this degree. To, to see these athletes and, you know, do what they're doing is, is just incredible because, you know, weights that are considered heavy in CrossFit would be considered a warm-up for most of these men. Well, these guys wouldn't want to do the running about but, <laughs> or, or even the bodyweight yeah. events, but they are exceptionally powerful athletes. And talking of powerful athletes, look at Brian Shaw there just getting himself ready. Shaw getting warmed up. He will go after Rob Kearney, but Shaw currently sits in fifth place, two fourths and an eighth in three events. So our next athlete is Luke Stoltman. As I said, one of the best log lifters on the planet. He's considered the best in the world at cleaning the log, where you're trying to get the log from the floor up to the shoulders. His pressing is unbelievable and he's improved over the last few years on his moving with the yoke. This could be a good event for the older Stoltman. And there's a look at the 1,000 pound yoke. Looks easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> easy to look at. There is Luke Stolman, who will be up next, and he has to follow J.F. Carone's act. Luke's really improved over the last couple of years. He was always a very solid, strong man, but the last couple of years he was able to, able to go full time. He used to work on the oil rigs up in Scotland, and since he's been able to go full time on the strong man, his performances have improved drastically. He is without question one of the strongest men on the planet. He's won some major international contests this year, including oh, Europe's strongest man. He'll be looking forward to this one. Stoltman coming into this event is tied with J.F. Carone for seventh. And J.F. Carone just knocked one out of the park here. So Stoltman has to find a way to follow that up with a solid performance. One minute counter there. Getting his straps. <coughs> you wouldn't normally wear the wrist straps for, for the yoke, but obviously with the log coming up, watch those wrists nice and secure. You're preparing for two events in one. It's, it's an unusual event, this. J.F. Caron, the only man so far who's been able to finish the entirety of this event, the 50-foot yoke carry and then 
three log presses at 360 pounds. So Luke going with the trainers, wants to be fast on this first part, the 1,000 pound yoke. He needs to be trying to get this part of the, the event done in under 20 seconds. He'll move on to the log and those huge triceps and shoulders, he can press this weight easily. One of the absolute best log lifters, particularly for reps, we've ever seen. Here goes Luke Storm. Here we go. This looks nice and steady. He's got full control of the implement. It's not rocking around. He's moving exceptionally well. Already well over halfway through. He just needs to break the line. Look at that. Under 20 seconds. Onto the log. He's going to be fast. He knows there's quick men to come. Easy clean. How's the press? Oh, just get that stability. There we go. One rep done. Stolman right to work, man. He has a chance here. That's a better rep. Just needs to stabilize at the top and wait for the down signal. He gets it. 15 seconds before we hit Caron's time and Stoltman. He needs to punch this overhead, get the lockout. Oh, just fails that third attempt. He still has it racked. If he can get it. Oh, just and doesn't. It's not going to count. He needs to take a deep breath now. He's got plenty of time. Two and a half minute time. He needs to compose himself and focus on making sure he gets this rep. Now for me, this is the accumulation of Wheel of Pain and the yoke. He would normally blast this type of weight overhead. He's feeling the fatigue. He needs to make sure of this one. Deep breath now and then drive overhead. Nope. So asking the time. He's still got plenty of time. I think he's got 60 seconds he's got left. A minute left. There's a two and a half minute time cap. So Stoltman has already gotten farther than everybody but Corone. See what it's, ta it's taking it out of him. He's really feeling this. I've trained with Luke. I've seen him lift this type of weight like a warm up. This is the, the combination of events causing the fatigue now. Compose yourself, Luke. 30 seconds One last left for big Stolman. effort to get this done. He only has one rep left. And can't do just it. can't lock it out. And he is and done. He is physically beat. He will be extremely disappointed with that. Luke is, without question, one of the best log lifters on the planet. He had a great pace early and was right there on JF Caron's pace, especially when he got done with the, the yoke. And then his first two reps on that log were well ahead of JF Caron, and then he just hit a wall. Absolutely. He moved exceptionally well on the yoke. Moved to the log nice and quickly. I was expecting him to blast through it. Just looked like he lost a little bit of stabilization at the top. Couldn't quite fix the log out perfectly. Magnus, a very strict referee, makes you hold those implements till you're fully locked out. You can see now they're bringing oxygen. He's feeling it. Just looked great, though, to start this event. Yeah, the, moving very, very nicely on this. Really improved. This, as this aspect of his game, he was never the fastest guy a few years back. His moving events have got much better. You kind of expected by the time he got to the log for it to be bread and butter, but just shows. And that's where he realized it is I, I got to take a little more time here to gather myself before I get back on that thing because it's so costly when you miss a rep on something like that. It just takes so much out of you. Absolutely. It's, it's a horrible feeling. I've been there, obviously, many times myself. And you know in training certain weights can be easy. But in competition where that lactic acid build up, that fatigue, every single event, it gets worse and worse and you just feel the power being zapped out of your body. And the medical team just doing a good job of escorting him down into the, uh, the dugout there. I don't think there's any injury there. I just think it's sure, a sheer exhaustion. The crowd gave him a good send off. 
Now, Rob Kearney will be up next. Now, Rob's someone I predict to do very well on this event. Rob is absolute dynamite when it comes to the, the Super Yoke. And as you've mentioned, former American Loglyph record holder. He is coming back from tricep surgery. But he's, he's been talking a good game about this, this event. He loves the Super Yoke. Not the biggest athlete, but he moves fast and he's got great core strength and stability. He hasn't had a, a bad competition so far. A fifth place to open in the elephant bar deadlift and then back to back six, sixth place finishes, but he's only one point back of Brian Shaw for fifth, a point and a half back of Kieliszkowski for fourth. could very well have a big role in our overall score after this. If he can put in a solid performance and beat some of the guys that are leading, could really mess the points up a little. And could very well set us up for a very exciting final event. Just one event to go after this. So as we mentioned earlier, if you are not in position to at least contend for a spot inside the top five of the top three after this event. It's going to be hard to work your way up the overall leaderboard in any meaningful fashion with one event. Well, Rob's the first guy to come up to the log. He wants to make sure it's in the perfect position for him transitioning from the yoke into the log. You know when you're good at an event, you want it to go well. And I, I know just looking at him there, he's confident. He feels he can perform well in this. He wants to get everything right, especially as the crowd gets bigger, more people cheering you on. It's a great opportunity for Rob. And as we saw J.F. Caron put up a super fast time and, and Luke Stoltman go out at a big pace, seconds are going to matter here. Absolutely. I actually believe sub 40 is possible. So let's see what Rob Kearney can do. 30 seconds. Rob Kearney looking to become the second man to finish this event in its entirety, J.F. Caron has the time to beat 56.03 seconds. These implements, they, they adjust the height for each athlete as well, so being taller or shorter is no real disadvantage. He's up, looks rock steady. Look at that, the implement isn't moving at all. Nice and quick, very, very fast feet. Look at this speed. 14 seconds to finish the yoke. Unbelievably quick. Now he moves onto the log. Posing himself, not rushing. He wants to make sure he gets every single rep nailed. First rep down. There we go. 30 seconds gone. He needs two more repetitions. Drive hard. He jerks under the. He's going for a one of the press today. Oh, Kearney's going to fail that lift. Number two. Just that left arm there, not quite locking out. And it looks like J.F. Perone is going to hang on to the top time. So once again, we see a great start. And then the log just proves to be a sticking point. And that run on the yoke was superb. Plenty of time for Rob Kearney. 90 Rob seconds left. Revert back to more of his jerk technique. He's trying to push press. There we go. Gets that. Did he get that? No, they didn't give him credit. Didn't hold it long just enough. Just unlocked the elbow. I think that's the, the elbow that he's had surgery on. Doesn't have the confidence that he once did. And that's, look, he's mentally beat up by not getting that rep. And I've seen, I've seen worse reps given before. So sometimes, Magnus is a very strict referee. He does, he's very fair across the board. Inside a minute left, for Rob Kearney has two reps to go here on this 360 pound lock. He's gone there. And now he's just out of gas. A great effort from Rob Kearney. Very impressive on the yoke. Got through 14 seconds. One successful lift. It just shows this, log. this combination of events. It doesn't matter how good you are at the yoke. It comes down to the log at the end of the day. 
Rob Kearney, the best we have seen so far on the yoke. 13 or 14 seconds to finish this 1,000-pound yoke. Unbelievable. Look at those quick feet move. Rob Kearney, one of the absolute best to ever do the super yoke. Unfortunately, tricep still not 100%. Doesn't manage to get all the reps, and I was expecting him to. I thought he could do big points there. He's disappointed. You can see that. You will be watching Brian Shaw very closely because that is the man that Rob is chasing in the overall standings. Shaw with a one-point lead on Kearney coming into this event for fifth place, and Shaw will be up next. And I think what's happened so far suits well for someone like Brian Shaw. He's not the fastest guy, but he's methodical and he's capable of doing all of these reps, no problem. And this is the advantage of going later on. You don't have to rush. When you go out first, you don't know what the guys are going to do. So now he's seen what's come before him. He knows if he gets all three reps up on the log, he's going to get good points. <gasps> Brian Shaw trails Kieliszkowski for fourth place by just a half point. But he is five points back of Alexei Novikov for third. Brian's going to want to finish strong. You know, he may be out of contention now for, for the overall, but he's still not too far behind third place. A solid performance here going into the stones. Brian is an exceptional stone lifter. And a good solid performance here make it puts pressure on those guys yet to come. The road crew resetting the yoke for Brian Shaw, who is probably the tallest athlete that we yeah, have. I think you're going from the shortest to the tallest. Maybe Tom Stoltman, just an inch taller. But Rob Kearney is definitely the shortest. So the biggest adjustment there for the crew. Brian likes heavy yokes. He just copes. His body is designed to cope with heavy weight. Such a professional. He's always making sure every little element is right. Chalk where his hands are going to go. Chalk where the back is going to be into that bar. He's looked at the log. mentioned before just what a fixture he has been in this sport started strong man in, in 2005 is when he won his, his first competition his amateur competition he turned pro after he won that he got hooked on the weights when he was training to play basketball in college yeah, you wouldn't want to be up against him no. in a basketball court no <laughs> <laughs> you would not want to take a charge from Brian Shaw he is, without question, one of the most successful strongmen of all time. Four times world strongest man. Three times Arnold Classic winner. And he had a stretcher of the Arnold Strongman Classic where he was finishing second or first the entire time. Him and uh, Zadrina Saviskas and Brian Shaw, for many, are uh, two of the, the greatest to ever do this. And they competed in the same era. You know, they... If you take one of those guys out of that era, they could have been <laughs> seven, eight time champions. Still hanging with the top guys in the world. At close to 40 years old. I don't, I, I'm always amazed at his motivation to keep going. You have to respect that. He's not about the one title. He wants to be the greatest there has ever been. He still believes he's capable of a fifth world strongest man. And I know he's been training hard for this rogue invitation. All these athletes super pumped to be part of this. The rogue invitational and, and the rogue company investing in the sport, helping it grow. And Brian Shaw wants to be a pioneer of that. And if you've ever had the, the privilege of speaking with him or interacting with him, he's a Super friendly guy. I've always seen him be, be very generous with the fans. Just a great ambassador for the sport. Absolutely. Yeah. 30 seconds. 
30 seconds now before Brian Shaw. It's after that 1,000 pound yoke. 50 foot carry on the yoke and then three log presses at 360 pounds. And so far, J.F. Cologne, the only man who's been able to complete this event in its entirety. He did that in less than a minute, 56 seconds. 56.03 is the time to beat. So let's see what the four time world strongest man champion can do. Gets himself set under. Steady steps, he's trying to get through the yoke. I'm sure the leg is screaming at him on this. He's nice and steady, he's just got to finish it. That's all he needs to do. He's got plenty of time, he knows there's no ridiculously fast times ahead of him. All three reps on the log is going to be good points. Nice and smooth for Brian Shaw as he moves on to the log, and you can see him he's in pain there. limping noticeably as he approaches the log for his first attempt. Come on then, Brian. Let's fight through that pain. You can do this. This is going to be the worst part for him. Cleaning the log. This is where it's going to hurt the hamstring. He's got it up to the chest. And a good solid press there. Two left for Brian Shaw. Take your time. One more rep puts him into second place. Very methodical. He knows this is the part that's going to hurt. Rose it up to the lap. Powerful drive with the hips. And then if it's anything like that last rep, the press will be easy, and it is. Good, second strong Second rep is good for Brian Shaw. One rep remaining, looking to become the second man to finish this event. His wife there cheering him on. Everyone wanting him to finish this log. Deep breath, fight that pain, block it out. Powerful drive now. Just needs to make it settle, get it in position. And there we go. Brian Up. Shaw has done it. Second man to complete the medley. Brian Shaw finishing in a time of one minute, 37 seconds. Proud wife there. Look at that. It means a lot to him. He's a warrior. He wanted to come and challenge for this title. Unfortunately, picked up an injury on the first event, but he doesn't pull out. He keeps fighting till the end. And Brian Shaw will be proud of himself for that performance. It doesn't always go to plan but he's a champion for a reason. Looking to pick up his best finish of this competition. Second place in this event right now. He has two fourths and an eighth. Normally, Brian is much quicker on the yoke. You can tell the hamstring was holding him back. You could see him almost limp from the yoke to the log. I'm sure that was a one minute, 37 seconds of sheer pain but the relief at the end, the proud wife watching on. The final log lift here. Good solid press there. Down signal from the referee there. And look at that. Very sure there. Proud of her man. Brian Shaw is going to keep the pressure on Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who is just a half point ahead of him. Coming into this event, Kieliszkowski will be up next, and he also is able to put a little distance between himself and Rob Kearney, as Kearney was only able to complete one lift. The Shaw completes the entire event, just the second man to do it, and trying to lock up, again, his best finish of this Rogue Invitational. Started off with back-to-back fourth-place finishes in the Elephant Bar deadlift and the Sear Bell ladder, then took eighth in the wheel of pain, you can see him just laboring down those stairs. Like I said, I don't know how he keeps putting himself through it. He's, he still believes he can win these major titles. I think he's got nothing to prove. Absolutely one of the greatest of all time, but he, it's that personal challenge, and you have to respect that. He still wants to keep fighting, finishing that top five. And that could have been an event that could have cost him. Like I said, on paper, Rob Kearney should have been a banker for him, to be honest. It doesn't always go to plan. And Brian Shaw there, very, very solid professional performance. And if he wants to jump into the top four, he's going to have to pay close attention to what Kieliszkowski is going to do next. Kieliszkowski just a half point up on Shaw. 
Now this is going to be a real questions answered performance now. We have Kiliuszkowski coming up. Who you, if you threw this event at him two years ago, you would say he wins this hands down. No question. He's someone that is rapid on the yoke. He would one motion 360 pounds on a log. The question is, how is his confidence? How much has that tricep recovered? He's looking focused. He will 100% believe this is, this is his chance. He needs a big performance here. He needs to win this event. Prove he is still one of the absolute most dangerous men on the planet when it comes to strongman competition. Staying in the dugout with that fan in his lap just to stay cool. It is much warmer today than it was yesterday here at, at Dell Diamond. This has been a much more challenging event than I, than I was expecting. I, I do think that wheel of pain has taken it out of their legs. I said that could be a factor. Obviously, it's been a long season. And there wasn't a lot of turnaround time between the two. Just a couple of hours for them to recover, try to get get back into, into fighting shape before they came out here and, and attacked this really unique combination that I know I don't think you've seen before. No, I, I've never seen these two events put together. Very interesting, very clever by the organizers. And when I say clever, it's, it's an interesting one because you do have guys that specialize in certain events. But when you put two events together like this, you could be great, and we saw it. You know, so far no one has beaten Rob's time on one the Sufia. Minute. But you have to be good at both elements. Everybody doing their best to get a little relief from the sun. I mean, on paper, I would never pick Jeff Perron to come out on top of this event. Right. And his consistency, and, and he is consistent. You, you watch his career, you look back, he's always there or thereabouts. Maybe not winning these major events, but he's not far off the pace. And his ability to be solid in both implements is keeping him in first place right now. You mentioned how good he is, is Kieliszkowski on the log. I think back to a couple years ago, we, we saw him in Santa Monica at a qualifying event for the Arnold Strongman Classic. Just you know, make a log like this look like it was just an empty barbell. It was ridiculous I've, how quickly he was able to get that thing up and over his head. I've seen him throwing around 400 pounds mm -hmm. like the rest of us would warm up, you know, with 200 pounds. <laughs> he truly is an incredible athlete. Here's the buzzer, gets under. Let's see how he is on this. He's looking fast. Eating up the course nice and quick. What's the clock say? 13 seconds for the super yoke. Now, this is the important part. How is his log looking? How is the tricep? This is where we answer the questions. Matthews, one motion to the log. Oh, there we go. He's feeling confident. Can he do that for the second rep? Rep number two is good. One more, he's got plenty of time. What's he gonna do? It's a risk to one motion. Does he go for it again? Yes, he does. And he fixes it over here. Koski has done it 41 seconds. Proving he is back. Kilius Koski laying it down to the other competitors. 41-74, goes into first place, obliterates Karen's time. And you said 40 seconds was possible. Said 40 seconds was possible, so he did slow. You know, he did slow, but we'll forgive him. He's coming back from injury. Oh, unbelievable performance there. Really solid yoke. And then we were, we were questioning whether he had the confidence to go for that one motion on the log. He did. I spoke to him before. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm not ready. But then but you get the out crowd on the floor. Here, yep. I tend to change things a bit. He's and we're going to show you the whole thing because it was super fast. Look at this, straight under. Nice and solid. Look at his foot speed there, moving really well. Look how stable the yoke is. Across the line, no problem. And then when he did that first rep with the one motion, I was jumping out of my seat. Look at that rep. So good to see, so good to see that confidence coming back. 
one of the absolute most talked about strongmen over the last few years. So many people see him as the best guy never to win the world's strongest man. There we go. Unbelievable there. effort. Unbelievable from Peter Skowski just ripping that 360 pound log off the ground and over his head like it was empty. Unbelievable. And he's looking for his first event win of the competition. Think back to the beginning of this Rogue Invitational. He didn't get a single successful lift on the deadlift. He was in dead last. He has worked his way up the leaderboard with back-to-back -back third place finishes. And now, depending on what Novikov, Stoltman, and Leitzis do, he might find himself inside the top three after this event. He could do. I mean, our next man is exceptionally good at this type of event as well. And then we have the two leaders to come. So some incredible athletes still, but Kiliushkovsky can be very proud of himself. He's really had to battle and, and you know, he questioned whether he'd be able to come back at all. Spoken to him privately. He's a very kind of calm, quiet man and, and he really didn't believe he could even be back at this level, just competing. Never mind challenging for a podium or even potential potentially winning the title. Well, you mentioned that he's dealing with a little bit of a lat tear, which is what kept him from wanting to you know, go after the deadlift. He didn't want to aggravate that. And if he had just finished middle of the pack in that event, he might be your overall leader at this point. Absolutely. So the dragon, Martins Lysis. Very he's your overall leader, 26 points on top of the standings. Such a popular athlete, Lisi's. Good to see him back. Look at Novikov, like a caged animal in there, ready to unleash the power. We saw that incredible explosive power yesterday in the dumbbell. He knows this is where he needs to step up now. Two incredible athletes in Tom Stoltman and Martins Lisi's ahead of him on the scoreboard, but he's not giving up the fight yet. And what Novikov was able to pull off yesterday in the Sear Bell ladder, I think, was the most impressive performance we saw in any of the competitions that are going on here at the Rogue Invitational. Just cleared the ladder and was able to press a 300-pound dumbbell one-handed over his head. Pressing himself overhead. <laughs> So we have three men left to go up. Current podium, 2020 World Strongest Man, Alexei Novikov. He's had an incredible year, podiumed on almost every single show. And he likes this event. Seen him in a number of shows this year and he has been exceptionally fast. His speed is second to none really. We always talk about Kiriyashkovsky being fast, but Novikov could well be establishing himself as the fastest strongman on the planet. We have a look at the log that awaits after the yoke. Very impressive element. And we just saw Mateusz Kiriyashkovsky make it look like a child's toy. Alexei Novikov should be the next man out. He currently sits in third place overall with 22 points. Just four and a half up on Kieloskowski. So he does Novikov needs to at least stay as close as possible to Kieloskowski so he doesn't surrender a ton of points going into the fifth and final event. And he's trying to track down Tom Stoltman for second place overall, Novikov trails him by three. Yeah, this is where Novikov needs to really put the foot on the gas. Look at the focus. He's almost got to take a risk here. Kiliushkovsky has laid down a tremendous time. Beatable, but you have to just go for broke. 
And the perfect scenario for Novikov would be to win this event with Kiliushkovsky coming second. Just to try and close that gap against the, the leading two. Three points back at Stoltman, four points back at Leitzis, who sits in first place overall. And if that does happen, what an exciting finish we'll be in for. Here we go, Alexei Novikov approaching the super young. 1,000 pounds on his back. Gets it up. And look at the speed of this man's feet. Moving well. A little behind Kiliskowski's pace, but a great number on the yoke. Now three reps on the log here. There's one rep. Thirty seconds. He gets two reps. It's possible. There's the down signal. He's going to have to be fast. Final <laughs> attempt. Close. If he can hit it, and Novikov has it. And oh, that one. Did he get the down signal? I'm not convinced that he did. I don't think he did. Magnus Magnuson's hand is still in the air. So that was a costly no rep for Novikov. But he's going to have to find a way to. So he's going to have to compose himself now. Big cheer from the crowd. And this Novikov time gets will the make down that signal. one count. And we'll move into third place in this event. Stolman and Leitzis still to go here. The two men that Novikov is chasing in the overall standings. But that's a good result for Mateusz Kieliszkowski right now. Oh, that, that is perfect for Kieliszkowski. Could really get himself back into the contention now. Novikov was extremely close, but he had to take that risk. The problem is when you go for broke, there is always the chance that things don't go to plan. You know, on a different day, he may have got it. Today wasn't that day. Slips down third place. JF Karan in between Kiliushkovsky and Novikov. One more look here at the entire attempt from Alexei Novikov, who did exactly what the doctor ordered on the yoke. He did, he moved really well, actually. One thing I noticed, though, the, um, the timer starts when they're stood on the line rather than when they're under the yoke. So he was a little slow getting himself in position. First rep moved really well on the log. Second rep was solid. Oh, just unlocked there, got the down signal. But it was here, he tried, he knew he had to rush. The judge's hand stays up, nicely fixed up, but he's moving. And then he stepped off the back of the platform, totally lost his balance there. Unfortunate for Novikov, but still third place. He's still in the battle, managed to compose himself. Not always easy to do. He's a he's very good, you know, he's got a level head on him as Novikov. Good solid rep to finish off. Two men left here as the crew resets the super yoke. Tom Stoltman and Martins Leitzis just one point separating the two of them. Stoltman in second place with 25 points. Leitzis in first at 26. And Stoltman is coming off that big win in the Wheel of Pain earlier today. Yeah, that Wheel of Pain performance was very, very impressive by Tom, a 2021 World's Strongest Man winner. How is he looking on the yoke and log medley? Again, vastly improved on these type of events. A lot of people question his log lifting. He's actually one of the best log lifters in the world these days. Very good for reps, his maximum weight has improved. Won the log medley at World's Strongest Man in 2020. His wife there just keeping him cool, keeping him focused. Stoltman is trying to fend off Alexei Novikov, who is now in third place in this event. Novikov three points back at Stoltman coming in. It's important for Stoltman to stay close to, to Alexi here. 
as they head into the final event later on. That mistake by Alexi there is going to take a bit of pressure off Tom. I think Tom will believe he can beat that. Whereas if, if Alexi got that log, he would have probably felt pressure that he had to go full throttle. Whereas now he can focus on good points. But with Lishi still to come, and Lishi's being ahead overall, I don't think Tom can hold back if he wants to win this show. This is important. Time to prove he's the best in the world. He believes it. Now it's time to prove it. And you want to talk about an athlete just oozing confidence. That's exactly what we saw after he won the Wheel of Pain. Yeah, that's been the big change in Tom over the last year. He really, really believes he's the best now. He was told by a lot of people he was the best before, but now he believes it. And it just seems to make such a difference. You know, you just see the confidence in the way he walks around, the way he talks to people. He and Pizzi's right next to each other in the dugout. I wonder if there's a little mental warfare going on right now. Maybe trying to psych each other out. <laughs> Some information there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's A lot of these guys are great friends away from competition, but when it comes to competing, they all want to win. There's no hiding that. Tom Saltman now making his way to the yoke. This is where it gets exciting then. One point currently between our top two athletes. Here they are. Tom Stoltman approaching the yoke. 1,000 pounds, 50 foot into a 360 pound log lift. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday, setting yourself up for success. And that's exactly what Martins Lietzis did with his third place and the second place finish in day one. Started the day in the lead, so he gets to go last here. And that, when you have something this close, that, that is invaluable. It's such an advantage. And it's, it's, it's the advantage you're given for that brilliant performance that he's put in so far. He hasn't put a foot wrong right from the deadlift. Unbelievable performance. Dumbbell consistently performing well. Wheel of pain, second place. Just keeps putting yes. pressure on the other athletes. Four men have been able to complete this entire event. We just saw Alexei Novikov do it in 105.51 seconds. And here goes Tom Stolman. Nice steady on the yoke here. Not as fast as some of the other athletes we've seen, but he's moving just the same. Nice steady stride. No mistakes. That's the goal for Tom Stolman. A smooth run for Stoltman as he is through that first 50-foot carry, now onto the log for his three reps. Clean there. Ooh, you see that log just tipped forward as he went to press there. He corrects himself on the second attempt. Just to make sure those elbows stay high. That's a better press there by Tom Stoltman. Now what's the clock? 46 seconds. Needs this. If he can get ahead of Caron. And he does. There's Tom Stoltman coming up with the performance that he needs. 52.06 seconds. Moves into second place. And now the pressure is on Martins Lietzis, who's trying not to surrender the overall lead to that man. And that's a great performance there by Tom Stoltman. Very professional. Didn't panic. Composed himself when that log rolled a little. And then in the end, three very, very impressive presses. Second place. He'll be very pleased with that performance. One more look at Stoltman's effort here. Not as quick as some of the other athletes we've seen. Very, very wide stance. Very wide man, to be fair. <laughs> nice and steady. Finishes the yoke in around 20 seconds. his first rep and he goes to press the log tilts forward a little comes out of the line composes himself and in the end a very comfortable press i think if there's one word to describe what we just saw from tom solman it's smooth absolutely 
second that was even better. Magnus's hand up held high. Good solid press, gets the down signal. That's a happy man. If Martin Lietzis wants to hang on to his overall lead, he's got to beat Tom Stoltman to do it. And Stoltman just put up a very impressive time doing all he can. He's put Things the pressure on here. Him. He's definitely put the pressure on our leader. Now, how does Lisis respond? First contest back in a long time. He's not put a foot wrong so far. Does he feel the pressure? He looks cool and he's got the shades on there. But believe me, inside the nerves are kicking in. Martin Fleet is originally from Latvia. Moved to the United States when he was younger. Then found his way out to California and Ode Haugen took him under his wing. And here he is, one of the top athletes in the sport. First met Lisi's back in 2016 at the World's Strongest Man. And I've been super impressed with him. Very confident back then. You could tell this guy was destined for greatness. 2019, he achieved the pinnacle by winning the World's Strongest Man. Unfortunately, been out injured for a little while. But it's so good to see him back. He wants to add more major titles. The Rogue Invitational, huge, huge contest. Every single one of these athletes wants to win. And this man is our current leader. And this is one of the most loaded, talented fields that we've ever seen in a strongman event. Absolutely, a strongman kind of um, demographic changed for a while. We, we had Lysis and Kiliuskowski as our two main guys, kind of overtaking the likes of Shaw and Zadrunas. Um, we expected them to go on and dominate for a while. Both suffered some injuries, and then we've seen an influx of talented youngsters, Tom Stoltman, Novikov, and a whole host of others now that are fighting their way up the list. But now we see the return of these two great men. It's been so good to see. For me, four of the absolute top athletes that we've ever seen battling on the same field right now. And five, if you, I mean, you include Brian Shaw there. Unfortunately, Brian just battling through injury, but our top four today, these are four men that are going to find their, their head to head a number of times over the next few years. This is probably not the first or last time we're gonna see a scenario in which Leedsy, Stolman and Novikov are battling for the top spot on the leaderboard. Absolutely. Here comes the dragon, Martins Leedsy's first place overall. Two seconds and a third, has yet to win an event, but has been the picture of the word consistency. And that's why he's so good. You know, you talk about Lisi's, doesn't necessarily have a standout event, just doesn't have a weakness. <laughs> and that's a key point to being a great champion. Magnus Ver Magnuson, our referee, former four-time World's Strongest Man himself, was very similar. He didn't always win every event, but he was always there or thereabouts. And this is interesting. He's got his knees wrapped. This is an unusual tactic. Wrapping the knees on something like the yoke oh, is not always a good idea. You kind of you know, stop the blood flow. He may be feeling he needs to protect them. This might slow him down a little. The movement and the transition from yoke to the log. Martinez Lee, he's the last man to go here in event four. One event remains after this. Focus. And Leetzies is hoping to be the overall leader heading into that final event. But Tom Stoltman put a ton of pressure on him after Stoltman's performance that saw him finish this entire event. Second fastest time we've seen. 
He doesn't need to win this event, but he'll want to stay ahead of Tom Stoltman. Fifty-two point zero six. That's the time that Stoltman just put up. He doesn't need to worry about the forty-one. He needs to focus on staying ahead of Tom Stoltman. Here we go. Under nice and quick, and he's up fast. Only three seconds from the line to being up with the yoke. Moving well. Again, not as fast as some of the athletes, but nice and steady, going all the way. No drops. He's about on Stolman's oh, pace. Just gets across the line there. Maybe a little ahead. Now to the log for Leetzies. Good clean there. Needs to fix it. First rep. Gets the down signal. Is good. That's a better rep there by Lisi's. Look much more fluent. Got his line right with the press. He could be quick. Oh, just lost his balance there, but still on for a good time. And Lietzies has done it. He'll get another second place finish, and he will be your overall leader with one event to go. 44-70 there. Lietzies again, another top three finish. Second place on the medley. What a return it's been for the former world's strongest man. The Dragon answers the call. Tom Stoltman throwing down a challenge, and Martins Leetes is up to it. As he finishes in second place in this event, he'll pick up a point on Stoltman in the process, so he will have a two-point lead over Tom Stoltman heading into the fifth and final event here of the Rogue Invitational. What a great that is, performance. That is huge. To have that extra point ahead of Tom Stoltman, he knows he doesn't even have to win the stones now. He just needs to make sure he's only one place behind Tom. Tom is an incredible stone lifter. And he will hang on to the advantage of being able to go last. Unbelievable performance here. Nice and steady on the yoke. Not the fastest, but he got through very, very smoothly. You can see how heavy that implement is. Just gets it over the line. That first rep he just needed to work hard for. The second rep, though, he corrects the technique. He makes sure the log is locked nice and tight into the throat, high on the clavicle. Look how smoothly that second rep goes up. And he was trying hard to catch up with Kiliuskovsky. Just missed the first dip. But again, composes himself, gets the down signal. Another top three finish. Second place in the medley for our overall leader, the Dragon, Martins Lisis. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with the Dragon. Mateusz, it's been a minute since we've seen you in a competition setting due to your injury. What was your training like coming back into competition? Uh, uh, finally, I win something, so one event. Um, I stopped my training two weeks ago because I got my lat injury. So. The best solution was stop and recover, but two weeks, it's not enough. You saw uh, yesterday, my deadlift was really weak. I can't pull because I'm afraid to, I don't hurt again and do next surgery. Um, today, uh, Conan Will was good for me. This event, I'm really, really happy because I won. Uh, you have one more event to go. What can we expect from you there? Uh, it's really hard to say because in this event, I use also my lats. I will try my the best. I will try to be careful, <laughs> but do good results. We'll see. I don't know what will happen. We'll wait and see. Thanks. Thank you. My apologies to Kieluszkowski for misidentifying him as the dragon. We somewhat forgot about the performance that he put up earlier winning his first event of the competition. It's so good to see him back winning events. Look at that one motioning the 360 pound log, the only athlete that's capable of doing that. Very pleased man. Look at it. It's nice to see him smiling. He's suffered a lot over the last couple of years. Such a, a talented athlete and proving why once again. And doing a fantastic job of working his way up the overall leaderboard. 
41.74 seconds, three seconds better than Martins Leitz. Leitz will hang on to the overall lead with one event to go, and Tom Stoltman with another fantastic effort, but it wasn't enough to cut into Leitz's lead, 52.06 for him. Karon Novikov and Shaw, the other men who were able to finish this event in its entirety. It's a big performance for J.F. Karon there. Fourth place, he's gonna be exceptionally pleased. Novikov will be disappointed with fifth place. He's dropped out of that contention for the top spot. It's all about Tom Stoltman and Lisi's, and now Kiliaskowski has a chance of getting that third spot. One event remains for the strong men here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. Plenty more action to come here from Round Rock, Texas. Stay with us, everybody.